everybody, I'm Joe Butita, your host for this premiere edition of Cycle Guide Video Magazine. Now, this is a new innovative way for us to reach you, our readers. We say innovative and perhaps exciting, too. Our objective at Cycle Guide has been to keep you, our readers, at the forefront of developments and changes in the world of motorcycling. We're here at the Willow Springs International Raceway in Southern California for the Superbike Sport Bike Connection. In response to your letters and phone calls, our staff is taking a step closer to you today with Cycle Guide Video Magazine. And we're going to answer your most frequently asked question. How close is my sport bike to the factory superbike racer? Factory teams from Honda, Yoshimura Suzuki, and Yamaha are here with world-class riders Wayne Rainey and Wes Cooley, along with Cycle Guide sport editor Dane Gingerelli, to ride and compare their superbike to the showroom sport bike. Now, having factory team tuners and riders present will ensure high performance levels and the safety of all the riders. So sit back and relax and watch your favorite pro rider or favorite factory model. Dane, riding this FC750 must be a real treat for you, but I bet the pace is a lot different than sitting behind a typewriter. Yeah, about 140 horsepower difference. <laughs> now, can you tell us what the basic uh, modifications are when comparing the super bike to the sport bike? Yes, obviously you can do en engine modifications to boost the horsepower up, as well as change the fork, rear shock absorber, tires, and wheels. Now, today we're going to compare the sport bike and the racer of the same factory model. Can you tell us about the three bikes Cycle Guide has chosen for this event? Well, we have Yamaha's FC750, which uh, Eddie Lawson rode at Daytona this year and won the race. We have the Honda VFR750, which is the class champion, and we have Suzuki's GSX-R750. Dane, why don't you take a few laps on the FC750, then we'll talk comparisons. See you here. Riding Eddie Lawson's Daytona 200 winning Yamaha FZ750 is Cycle Guide Magazine sport editor Dane Gingerelli. Dane is an experienced road racer. During 13 years of amateur competition, he's won four class championships and twice has been co-winner of the Ontario six-hour endurance race. He was a member of the Honda VFR 750 team that set the 24-hour endurance speed record at Laredo, Texas in 1985. Dane has been active in hundreds of road tests for the magazine, and just to set the record straight, this is Dane's fourth outing on a superbike for Cycle Guide. With these credentials, Dane was the perfect rider for a man-on-the-street observation of what it's like to ride the bike that won the prestigious Daytona 200 in 1986. The FZ reels out a stunning stream of acceleration because of the unique five-valve cylinder head. Yamaha engineers claim the five-valve head allows increased high RPM power without sacrificing low-end performance. Consider the similarities between the FZ750 Superbike and Dane's Yamaha YZR500 Grand Prix Road Racer. Both bikes share the same Swedish-made Olin single rear shock absorber. Then, too, the Japanese-built Kayaba fork on the FZ750 is nearly identical to that of the specially-built fork on the YZ500 Racer. The FZ750's three-spoke wheels and large diameter disc brakes are similar to what is equipped on the Grand Prix bike. As you can see, Yamaha was serious about winning Daytona with this bike. Not all of the FZ750's components are considered unobtainium. The engine is based on the same performance package that Yamaha sells over the counter to any AMA superbike rider placing his order. This performance kit includes high compression pistons, race carburetors, a highly tuned four into one exhaust system, and heavy duty valve springs. Like its street-going counterpart, the FZ750 Superbike has a rigid mild steel square tube frame, as well as the popular 16-inch front wheel. And because these bikes are so similar, the showroom bike possesses race bike replica abilities. Hey, Dane, the uh, street FZ750 is noted for a wide power band. What's the Superbike engine like? Well, it's a modified engine, of course, and produces about 140 horsepower. Um, at about seven or 8,000 RPM, it just explodes. It feels like it explodes and just starts pulling. And that until about 12,500, 13,000 RPM uh, pulls real hard. The racers will shift at about 13, too, they tell me. Is it tough to control at that point? Well, it's not so much tough to control. It's just it, it feels like it just wants to leap out of the frame. Now, most riders think that the major difference between these super bikes and their sport bikes is the horsepower, but there's more to it than that, isn't there? Obviously, you, you have slicks on the, the race bike, you have uh, 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 
Olin's rear shock absorber, Kayaba fork, different disc brakes, mm -hmm. lighter mag wheels, um, a few other odds and ends, but by and large, they are the same motorcycle, chassis, engine, uh, steering geometry, things like that. All right, so what's it like for someone who rides street bikes to ride a bike with slicks? Uh, a little it, scary sometimes, isn't it? Well, believe it or not, it's more reassuring uh, simply because your stock tires, when you put them on the limit, you, you get a little bit of slip. Mm -hmm. But with, with the slicks, you know, they, I mean, they grab and you go into the corners. And, and after a while, you, you gain more confidence as to how you want to approach the corner. And you, you get a little cocky, in fact, and, and you stuff it in a little tighter. Uh, of course, you watch the racers and they really grind the, mm. the things down. Well, then, is the super bike easier to ride than the street bike? Up to a point, yeah, actually, uh, because the slicks, the suspension's firmer. But like I say, once you hit that power band and it kicks in, if, if it's not standing straight up, it'll, it'll give you something to think about. Um, but riding it at about eight tenths, it's a lot easier, actually, than a street bike. All right, with all that in consideration now, what's the most noticeable difference between the two bikes? The slicks, the, suspen the firmer suspension, and obviously the horsepower. I would rate the horsepower as number one difference. Well, Dane, you ride that Daytona winner very well. Your expertise has been invaluable. Twenty-one-year-old Kevin Schwantz usually rides for Yoshimura Suzuki. Today, the familiar face riding the GSX R750 is Wes Cooley. Two-time superbike champion, Cooley has had a racing career which parallels the development of superbike racing. His involvement with Yoshimura dates back to 1974 when he rode the Yoshimura Kawasaki in the super production class. In 1976, when the AMA established the superbike racing class, West moved quickly into the top riding ranks. Nobody was better on the thunderous 1024cc racers through the turns. When the 1983 revised class rule limited engine displacement to 750cc, Yoshimura temporarily withdrew from racing, forcing West to sign with another team. Then a high-speed crash at Sears Point in 1985 led to his retirement. West currently represents a major motorcycle tire manufacturer and is a consultant to Cycle Guide magazine. Today, West has slipped into his old Yoshimura leathers for a session aboard the GSXR Superbike. Watching him ride the 140 horsepower Suzuki here at Willow Springs makes it easier to understand why he was one of the top superbike riders for so many years. According to Yoshimura's race chief, Suhiro Watanabe, this GSXR 750 needs few modifications to make it competitive for the racetrack. The GSXR 750 is a direct descendant of Suzuki's world championship GS1000R endurance racer. Indeed, Suzuki brings as much of its road race technology as possible to the street with the GSXR 750. The 750 is the first bike to offer an all-aluminum frame and the same aerodynamic fairing as used in the GSX-1000R. Other racing modifications include a Kayaba fork, three-spoke magnesium wheels, Moto Fox shock, and the mystical engine modifications that boosts horsepower to 140. Perhaps the most unique feature about the Yoshimura Suzuki is the 18-inch front wheel. While most race teams quicken their bike steering by using a 16-inch wheel, Yoshimura and Suzuki elects to stay with the more conventional 18-inch wheel. And with Wes Cooley aboard, the wheel is no problem. Wes is a staunch supporter of the larger diameter wheel, believing that it provides more steering input. Well, Wes, it looks like you really have it dialed in. Yeah, everything's working pretty good today. Everything's coming together, huh? Yep. Okay. Now, you've been retired from superbike racing for more than a year now. How did it feel to be back in the saddle, so to speak? I love it. I was figuring about getting just as crazy as I was before. You know, it's, uh, once you get in your blood, it's hard to get out. I really bet, hard to I get bet. Out. Now, before we talk about the GSX-R750, would you tell us the difference between riding a 750 superbike and one of the larger 1024s you rode during your championship years? I think the major difference is the fact that the, uh, the new GSX-R750 is a much lighter motorcycle. It's easier to control in a lot of the turns. Uh, another major difference is that it doesn't quite have as much horsepower, and so they're maybe a little bit easier to ride. 
Yet with the power difference in favor of the older bike, this GSX-R750 is actually faster around Willow Springs. As a matter of fact, you turned a 129.8 second lap here in 1980 aboard the GS-1000, yet the Yoshimura GSX-R750 has been clocked here at 127.8. Obviously, it's making up time somewhere beside the straights. Yeah, well, first of all, uh, back then, the technology in the motorcycle industry has changed tremendously. Uh, the bikes are handling better, and like I mentioned before, the new 750s are quite a bit lighter than the old 1000s. The 1000s used to point, uh, accelerate, stop, turn, point, accelerate. Uh, the 750s, you really have to ride hard through the turns, thus the lower lap times. Now, you were dragging your knee on most of the turns. What does that accomplish? Uh, I think that's mostly just riding style. Um, something about dragging my knee, it doesn't really do a lot for me other than it allows me to keep my body weight low to the tank. Uh, I have fairly long legs and they kind of just pop out, <laughs> out in the wind, so to speak. Um, it also, it, to some extent, it's kind of like a safety factor for me. I know that once I've got my knee down on the ground that there's not a whole lot of the tire left, so I better not go too much farther over. <laughs> well, Wes, what do you think? How does the sport bike compare to the racer? Well, there's obviously differences. Uh, the Back in the 19, early 80s, late 70s, when I originally rode, say, the GS1000s, there was a big difference between the production bikes and the racer that we rode. Uh, nowadays, that difference has been narrowed down extremely. It's, uh, there's very, very little difference. Uh, a person could go into the showroom floor and buy a bike and maybe have to do small modifications to the motorcycle to make it race ready, whereas before, you'd have to spend another $15,000 trying to get it ready to race on the track. Well, Wes, watching you has been a real privilege. You've given us an experience I'll long remember. Thank you and Yoshimura Suzuki for being here today. the next rider, Wayne Rainey, for his lap. Nobody won more superbike races last year than Honda's Wayne Rainey. Wayne's 1986 performance included a record five wins in a row. His teammate, Fred Merkel, captured the 1986 AMA Superbike Championship. To say that the two Honda riders dominated the class is an understatement. Rainey has recently returned to the forefront of the superbike circuit. His consistent, skillful riding has won him admirers among peers and spectators alike. Superbike competition didn't come overnight, though. After winning the title in 1983 for Kawasaki, he set off to Europe, where he raced a Yamaha TZ250 for Kenny Roberts. The following season, 1985, Wayne returned to America to compete in two classes for Bob McLean Racing. He rode Hondas in Formula One and Formula Two that year. Honda signed Wayne to ride one of the factory superbikes for 1986, and he obliged his new employer by winning six of the nine races. Honda claims the VFR similarities to its showroom equivalent goes beyond the body panel. Beneath the paint and glitter is a sport bike that, in stock form, appears suited as much to the track as it is to the road. Very few modifications were needed to make the VFR race ready. Unlike the Yamaha and Suzuki superbikes, the Honda VFR 750 has a V4 engine, which has narrower outside dimensions than its inline four contemporary. It's no secret either that the V4 design offers plenty of low-end power. Even so, the Honda 750cc engine revs to 11,500 RPM with ease. The net result? Nearly 150 horsepower. But the VFR 750 Superbike is not just a story of horsepower. Coupling that power to the ground is a Showa fork, Moto Fox shock, lightweight three-spoke magnesium wheels, and sticky Michelin race slicks. And just to make sure the VFR stops at the rider's command, 
two 13-inch diameter Brembo brakes were mounted to the fork. The end result was a third consecutive AMA Superbike Championship for Honda. Wayne, how did the VFR feel going through the nine corners here at Willows? Well, this is a pretty fast track, and uh, there's a lot of turns that are real bumpy, and uh, the bikes seem to go take the bumps, no problem at all. Felt real comfortable. All right, now turn one is pretty sharp. What do you do there? Well, that turn one's about 160 miles an hour when you enter the turn, and uh, what you got to do there is put the brakes on and backshift the, the bike about three gears, and you slow down to about 90 and go through there. But uh, the bike goes through there real good, and, and it feels real comfortable going through there. How does that compare to turn eight, the sweeper? Well, turn eight, it's a uh, six gear, about 150 through there, but you got to slow down a little bit because you're turning. And uh, the track's real bumpy through there, and uh, going that fast, the bike likes to jump around if you're really going real fast. So that, that's a real tricky turn, and the thing to do there is uh, enter it in a fast speed and then kind of set the bike to where it's smooth and then go fast again. And what accounts for this kind of performance? Well, uh, you know, I got the good bike, and um, uh, I got Michelin tires, and uh, I've just got, the, I've got real good equipment, and uh, the suspension's real good, and, and uh, it, just, it just makes it easy for me to ride with all the good components. All right, tell me then, does the super bike touch the sport bike? Well, you know, I was, I was kind of surprised. Uh, I haven't ridden a sport bike until out here today. Well, actually, I have one that I have at my house, but I haven't had a chance to ride it yet. But uh, I was surprised when I rode the sport bike today, and then I jumped onto the race bike. The, the way that they feel just setting on them and riding them without racing them is surprisingly the same. Uh, what's, what is the big difference is that uh, the race bike is, feels more rigid. You feel the bumps more on the racetrack than you do the, the, the sport bike. Well, Wayne, weight reduction was important in this VFR. What modifications are done to the stock bike to ensure the performance of a racer? Well, uh, the, the chassis, the frame is made out of aluminum, and it's real strong, and it's light, and uh, we don't change nothing from the sport bike to the race bike as far as, as the chassis goes. Uh, the only thing that we really do to the race bike that's different than the, the street bike is that uh, we put a little bit more horsepower in the, in the bike and a little bit bigger brakes, and uh, other than that, it's basically the same. Now, you won six races this season, more than anyone else. Uh, you had quite a year. Yeah, we, uh, we had a pretty good year. Um, I think we would have won seven, but they, they disqualified me for passing under a waving yellow flag, which is a new rule that, uh, well, I never did see a waving yellow flag, and they still haven't explained to me why I was disqualified, but I didn't get the points, and that's what cost me the championship, but that's over, and I've pretty much got that out of my system. It may be over, but I can, I can tell it still hurts a little bit. Well, only when somebody asked me about it. But, <laughs> Sorry, you know, I did that I, to that's you. That's all right. Now, the VFR 750 is a powerful engine. What does this superbike feel like accelerating off the corners? Well, it, uh, you have to be real easy with the power coming off the turn. Uh, the VFR has got so much power that uh, the, it spins the rear tires real easy. And it puts you back in your seat, and, and you really have to hold on to the bars tight because it wants to pull you off the back of the bike. So it's, it's for surprisingly, you know, coming off the, the looking like a street bike, it's, it's, really, it's really surprising the, the power it has. How much faster is this racer over the VFR sport bike? Well, uh, I think this one has about 20 more horsepower than the Stalker, but that's, you know, that's not really too much, considering how, but the motor's so good to begin with, it, uh, it doesn't take a whole lot to make it a lot better. So it, it, it the race bike this year ran 171 at Daytona, and I think uh, the stock bike runs 151. Well, it's a rewarding year. What advice would you give to a young rider who has dreams of racing Formula One or superbikes? Well, I think if he's serious, uh, he should really dedicate himself. Uh, always wear a helmet. Uh, the first thing I had to do before I got real serious in racing was finish school, you know, so that was real important to my folks and not so much for me. But after I got through with that, I got to get real serious on racing, and it all came together. But. Um, just train hard, and if you really want to do it, uh, you know, keep practicing and uh, don't give up, because uh, if you're good enough, there's, there's a slot for you out there. Wayne, thanks for being with us today. Uh, it's been a pleasure watching you ride. Thanks a lot. It's been fun being here.
Motors and factory teams have made this connection an overwhelming experience, proving that there is truly a small distinction between the showroom stock and the factory racer. Early superbike racing involved 1,000cc street bikes that reluctantly took to the racetrack. Extensive modifications were done to the suspension, frame, and engines to make the bikes competitive. What we've seen here at Willow Springs, however, is a street machine that moves onto the racetrack with consummate ease. These sport bikes were able to perform lap times less than two seconds behind their full race-ready counterparts and within one second of the original 1,000cc superbikes. You know, there's an old motorcycle saying, what works on the track works on the street. Judging by what we've seen today, we can now say what works on the track is on the street. You have seen, heard, and experienced riding as never before. Again, Cycle Guide continues to be informative and innovative in bringing you closer to the world of motorcycling. Join us again next issue. Until then, safe riding. This is Joe Butita for Cycle Guide Video Magazine.